We're at the Dusseldorf Boat Show and I've got a fictional 100,000 euros burning a hole in my pocket and I don't think there's a better boat show on the planet to compare boats back to back than this one. So let's go around these halls and see what we can find, shall we? What brands, what countries they're from, what style, how much accommodation, and I think there are gonna be a few surprises in store as well. So let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. This is the beauty of a boat show like this. It's a huge show, but actually the boats are very close to each other and they're very easy to clamber on and off, especially at this market where you're looking at sort of six to eight meters, I'd say, so you can jump on, no one's stopping you, no one's asking you to give them your details. You can just wander on and off and really compare side by side. What do I get from this brand? What do I get for this budget, this style? It's a really useful way of looking at boats. We're going to start with Bayliner because they're known for being good value and here we have the VR6 and two versions of it. Bow rider version over there, exactly the same hull and the cuddy cabin version over here. So you've actually got a little double berth down there in the cabin. You can have it with a 200 horsepower petrol inboard that starts at 65,000. This showboat, which has got a 250 horsepower inboard engine, 85,000 euros to this spec at the show. So well sub 100,000 euros, even to a decent boat show spec. You can also have it with an outboard if you prefer that. So what do you get? Well, you get a nice amount of seating space. I've got some nice fake looking rubber teak underneath my feet. You can see, you can pop a table in there. There's storage underneath this area here. And if you're sitting down here having lunch, there's also a canopy that pops up to give you a nice bit of shade. Wet bar opposite. It's all very simple. It's quite basic, but you know what? It does the job. How about if we move forward? Well, there's a two-way backrest here. So that swings down like this. Well, there's a pin. So that turns into somewhere you can lie down. And then we have the helm station. <laughs> that's nice and cosy nice view forward you know you've got a basic arrangement here in terms of instrumentation but you know it's a nice driving position nice and protected and this seat's bolsters as well so if you want to sit up and sort of peer over the windscreen you can and as i said this boat has got a little cubby cabin i mean you're not going to spend a week down there don't get me wrong but you have got a bit of sleeping space a bit of shelter a bit of storage and crucially a little toilet as well From the 6.8 meter Bayliner, we're now on a 7.6 meter Carnic CS700S. Carnic are a Cypriot brand, and this boat would ordinarily be pretty much 100,000 euros on the nose, but at the show, it's about 85,000 euros. So well within our fictional budget here. And what do you get for that with Carnic? Well, we have quite a lot of very clever functionality in this cockpit. For example, this whole seating section slides forward on runners. So you can do that, and then you can slide the backrest this way, so you can sit and look over the water if people are swimming or you want to do water sports slide that back you can slot a table in here and then on both sides we've got these benches that flip out as so on either side there's another flip down bench here so out of nowhere your open cockpit space has been transformed into a really quite useful seating space but if you want to fish do water sports as i've said put all of those away and you've got a nice clear space Bimini over top for a bit of shade, of course, as well. Moving forward, simple wet bar arrangement. This particular boat's got a gas hob under here, a sink, and there is the option to have a cooler as well. So you've got some cooling space in that slot there. This particular boat hasn't got it fitted. Two person helm with bolster seating so you can stand as so, or flip them down, sit down to get a bit more protection from the windscreen as part of the package this showboat's got. You've got a Simrad MFD here and one dial. We are at the budget end of the spectrum. Of course we are. Now you have actually got side decks as well. You don't have to walk through the windscreen on this boat. You've got little side decks either side to get up to the foredeck and another cabin down there. And there's a little bit more down there than there was on the bay liner. If I just step down, it's easy to get in. I mean, it is a bigger boat, but there's a fridge down here. I've got a storage locker and again, a little separate bathroom. Not bad at all. We're over on the Beneteau stand now, and for just over our 100,000 euro budget, you can get this, a Flyer 8 with a single 300 horsepower Suzuki outboard. 
good functionality on this boat and you can feel that extra size. You know, we're eight meters long, we're a little bit wider than what we've seen thus far and you do feel the effect of that. We've got the drop down seats on either side, much like we had on the Karnik. We've also got a drop down backrest here so you can create a sun pad here. Obviously the table goes up and down as well. We've got a hard top as well for a bit of protection. A couple of home chairs here as well and it's a nice walk around design so you can walk past the console and up to the foredeck where you've got proper sun lounging space up there that's a really decent sized sun pad and as you can see you can fix the canopy as well to give yourself a bit of protection quite a simple helm arrangement but like the other ones we've seen at this sort of size you can you can lean with the bolster section you can sit down it does feel a bit more protected this is quite a nice high console and we'll come on to the other benefits of that in a second but yeah this is a nice driving position clean, simple to use dash, a little MFD for your navigation and all your major controls slap bang in front of you. And I talked about the height of the console. Well, that really helps when we go downstairs into the interior where me at six foot, I can almost stand for the first time in this video down here. It's a bit of a stoop, but there is more space than the others. And actually this isn't just a bed on this boat. This is also a table underneath here. So if you really wanted to, you can come downstairs and eat. It's got a sink, it's got a fridge down here, a little bit of storage, and again, a separate bathroom. If you're after something electric for that budget, well, the Exshaw one just about sneaks there. We're cheating a little bit because it would be a very base boat for 100,000 euros, but you still get the same motor. You still get the 125 kilowatt motor that will give you a 30 knot top speed and 20 knots, you can probably cover about 25 nautical miles, 50 nautical miles if you're gonna do five knots. So if you wanna go electric, this thing will just about sneak into the budget. Let's have a look on board. And as I said, it's got a 125 kilowatt electric motor, a 63 kilowatt hour battery bank, and it will charge off single phase feed in three to four hours, so comfortably overnight from a typical marina shore power connection. On board, you have this sort of two-way seating area here, so you can face looking out the back, you can sit looking in, you've got your built-in cup holders, and you've got just nice open deck space here underneath the cover of this, well, I was about to say hard top, it's not actually a hard top because it's got a soft roof, but you can fully enclose it. You can take this away so you can fully open up this area to the elements if you prefer. As you can see, you've got two helm seats and really beautiful integration of all of the boat systems here. You sort of expect that from electric cars and they're doing this with the Exshore. So you've got all of your range information, your consumption information, plus navigation all in sort of bespoke graphics. It looks very, very smart and quite a cool throttle as well. Not your usual neck with a handle on it. You've got this neat little circle down here that you twist forward and backwards depending on which direction you want to go. Downstairs, relatively simple arrangement down there. It is a, a double berth, but it's, it's quite cramped. But hey, it's somewhere A for storage and B to shelter if the weather really turns. I haven't lost my mind, I'm not about to show you a 100,000 euro jet ski. This is the silver, where you drive your jet ski into your boat, connect the two, and then you maneuver your boat around using the jet ski as the power source. It's quite a novel idea, and it falls within our budget remit. As you see this package here, 60,000 euros, though there is a catch that doesn't include the jet ski. So by the time you've added this lovely Sea Dew jet ski, you're probably looking pretty close to that 100,000 euros. But what do you get for that? Well, you get a fantastic sunbathing platform for a start. It's absolutely littered in sun cushions. You've also got an A-frame and a weightboarding tower. You can see we've got the weightboard stashed away here. There's an eye on top so you can connect the line so you can weightboard directly from this thing. Or you can detach the jet ski, leave this as a floating platform for people to have fun on, lie in the sun, swim and go and have some fun in your jet ski, connect the two at the end of the day and head back home. Genius. Final stop on our tour is here at Axopar because for 96,340 euros, including VAT, you can have this exact boat you can see here, a 22 Spider with a single 200 horsepower Mercury outboard, and that will give you 45 knots. You don't get a T-top, you don't get a cabin, although there is a version over there with that, but that would have put us about 30 grand over budget. But this is just within budget. And what do you get? Well, you get this really good arrangement back here where you can move the seating all around. This opens up to become a sun pad. This backrest actually flips around this way, so it creates a bench facing into or out of the boat. You've got a deck shower over there. We've got a sink and a fridge underneath the helm seats. And then 
helm station, bolster seats, you can sit down, you can stand. You've got this really good driving position, you know, typical axle pass stuff. It's all very well thought out. It's a very good driver's boat, this. I've tested this, I've tested the 25 as well, and they really do punch above their weight out on the water. They're, they're really good sea boats. And actually, this folds down as well, so you can lower the air draft a little bit if you are moving the boat around. It fits on a trailer as well, of course. In fact, nearly everything we've seen today fits on a trailer. So if you want to trail your boat, then these are really good options. And then right forward here, you don't have the cabin. As I said, there is a cabin version, but you've got this nice arrangement on this boat where you can sit down around the table. You can drop this down as well, infill to make a sun pad. You've got the backrest here with the built-in cup holders. It's a small boat, but it's very, very functional. There you go then, there's a little selection of what you can get for 100,000 euros. It's not exhaustive by any means, but hopefully you found a good spread there of different types of boat that you can get for that budget. But let me know this, which one of the ones that I chose in that video would you go for? And if we do this again, which budget should we set? Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. Thanks for watching. I'm Jack Haynes. This is Yacht Buyer.